Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. I'm here today on the uh, steep Moshe Baram Road. I'm just about to take a right turn onto the Hebron, Hebron Road. And what I thought to do, what I thought I would do today, because I was in the area running an errand, I thought I'd do the walk I did in the summer, which was going south towards the crossing with Bethlehem, crossing checkpoint 300. But what I do instead, because the scenery out there is really nice, I would take a left turn and skirt by the entrance to Har Choma, which is a little bit over the green line. In fact, I will uh, make a comment when I'm passing the green line itself. Uh, as I did the last time, there's really nothing there. It's just a line on the map. The high rises we're seeing in front of us are located on Derech Hebron towards the end of the Arnona neighborhood in South Jerusalem. This is all South Jerusalem here. And uh, once I get over this hilly stretch, turning right, I'm going to stop talking for a minute to catch my breath, throw on a face mask because although this is a beautiful walk, it is running right next to a major uh, traffic artery. So uh, this is one thing I hope that when COVID finally ends, or at least becomes an endemic, one thing I'm looking forward to maybe seeing stick around is wearing face masks in certain circumstances because it's a big thing in Eastern cultures, not so much in the West. And as an asthmatic, um, I find my breathing is much, much better if I'm going on a walk or a jog like this when I stick a mask on my face to KN95 just to clean up the air a bit. So just to the left here would be uh, Ramat Rachel in fact you can see it there up on the hill which is a kibbutz on the periphery of Jerusalem there's a hotel there with a uh, fitness center in fact if I were to take this road I could get into it we're seeing those blue and white buses running in two directions the ones traveling opposite me traveling southbound are running into Jerusalem and the ones traveling on the my side of the road are running to Bethlehem as well as that this road leads to the main transit into Gush Etzion, uh, which is um, called Kvish Haminarot, the highway that goes through the tunnels because it actually passes under Beit Jala around Bethlehem so that's why it's called as such so we're just passing now Matrachel. Rachel I finally got round to uh, I actually ended up not fixing my phone I ended up just using an older phone I'm going to buy a new one so at least I have a functional uh, display now which is nice This now is looking westward as I turn the camera to the right and the turn off, the last turn off here is going to be towards Beit Safafa which is like the last Arab neighborhood in South Jerusalem following that there is Gilo and also Har Gilo As I continue along this road there will be a couple of things worth pointing out uh, There's a memorial that I hope we will pass which will be on this side of the road there's also the Mar Elias Monastery. Clearly because I'm traveling south and the sun is setting, the sun's in the camera a little bit. But uh, as I turn off, it should be a little bit easier to see. So this supermarket complex on the left, I believe is already part of Ramat Rachel. We can already see some open ground here on the left. You 
you can walk both directions on this street as I showed in my video in the summer this road by the way would be running into Ramat Rachel uh, what I was about to say though it's possible to walk both directions on this road as I showed in the summer you can walk all the way to the checkpoint with Bethlehem checkpoint 300 so if you're able to enter Bethlehem legally as a tourist whatever it's totally viable um, it's just not that heavily populated as you can see both in this direction and on the other side of the road leading into Jerusalem there's really no one else walking at this particular hour of the day those Israeli buses the well one of them is now a super bus but the first Egged bus was going to Gilo so that's kind of the last what are called ring neighborhoods in Jerusalem as you can see the signpost is directing us both to Gush Etzion along Route 60 and to Gilo itself tangentially this phenomenon of there being multiple bus companies in Jerusalem is a new development the second bus here the 75 is run by the super bus company and the 30 bus just ahead of it is run by Egged so this was only actually in the last few months that super bus got a license to operate in Jerusalem and when it did it has broken the monopoly that was hitherto held by Egged and if I may say so their buses are more comfortable so the lesson we learn is that competition is good so um, this is kind of the tail end of Beit Safafa not exactly sure what is down here but it is some kind of craggy craggy landscape it seems to be my go-to word for these videos describing stuff as craggy but this road I believe would be leading us into Beit Safafa as you can see from the Arab bus there Now we're sort of beginning to get into the whole reason that I wanted to come on this walk. Now that we're out of the city a little bit, we can start to see some of the very nice greenery on both sides of the road. So we've pretty much passed Ramat Rachel now. You can see it off in the distance there. And we get a little respite from construction as we get out of the Jerusalem urbanization so we've officially just crossed the green line I uh, forgot to mention exactly where it was but if you can see my location on the map here we're just about 20 meters past the green line so we're now officially over it and uh, technically anything beyond this point is already controversial thus if you read the wikipedia page for Gilo or uh, or Har Choma for that matter you'll see it's referred to in Israeli settlement just to be clear I'm not endorsing that position I'm just stating what the uh, what the facts are the facts at least as most people perceive them in the international community here we can see a bit of snow still not melted most of it's gone at this stage i'm recording this just a day or two after the uh after the snowing what i'm going to be doing differently on this video versus the last time i came out here is taking this left turn this is going on to route 398 um, so I'm going to be taking this turn off Hebron Road the Mar Elias Monastery which I might come back to later is on the opposite side of the road just a little bit ahead of us um, this by taking this road Har Koma is going to be on the right which is the south the Matrachel is going to be on the left the Palestinian village of Um Tuba is going to be on the left and Sur Bahar, they're both kind of it looks like 
amalgamated into uh, one village. Uh, so this is what I wanted to come and record today just to see what the views are like from this section of the road. Pretty much from this point onwards, the 398 traveling eastward as I am is going to be going into East Jerusalem. There's really not, not much more of uh, Jewish Jerusalem beyond this point after Amat Rachel, which is the complex up on the hill. Um, so it's going to be pretty much all. And this road actually loops down southbound around by Bethlehem and Beit Zahor, which is one of the... Beit Zahor is really part of Bethlehem, although I think it's actually technically classed as Area A. I'm just waiting for this light to turn green. And on the other side, this is looking back towards those two towers where we were about 10 minutes ago. That is in Arnona and then all the way to Jerusalem. And you've got a really good view from this point all over the city. You can see the cranes in downtown Jerusalem all the way from up here in the, in the south. This is the kind of place where if Jerusalem ever gets around to installing decent cycling lanes, they would be really needed because you can see trying to cycle on this road would be a bit risky to, to say the least. So once we get, finally get across, I'm going to cross to the right of the road. Um, go by Harful Man and see what else can be seen. Hey, finally green after the longest tra what felt like the longest traffic light in the world. So we're now on to the 398. And this is exactly what I came out here to see. Bit of a uh, bit of nature. I'm going to try to get to the other side, but I want to wait for some less chaotic uh, crossing in the road. Looks like there are a couple of uh, trails through here. I never really appreciated until recently just how many trails there are running through Jerusalem. I'm not sure all of them are even mapped on um, all trails. There we go. So those buildings in the distance would already be in Har Choma. In fact, the Israeli government, I believe, recently announced a, uh, the awarding of a tender for building in Har Choma, which was controversial. So living in Jerusalem, it's kind of hard to, you just get used to living here and then you're like, well, why would building in Har Choma be controversial? Because living in this city, 
you're not reminded daily of the existence of the green line or any of that stuff so um so yeah this is the uh, harko in front of us technically uh both considered a settlement but also one of the ring neighborhoods is the word used to describe these neighborhoods that are attached to the city of jerusalem so you can get buses right within jerusalem to harkoma and back it functions really as part of the city although this complex up on the hill here or Matrachel, if i'm not mistaken is actually its own municipality I'm going to put on the mask like I said he would earlier because it's getting a bit fumey here.
So this is uh, labeled on the map as Um Tuba, the uh, Palestinian Arab town on the other side of the wall. I'm still I'm walking now on the route 398, which is going to wind around Parfuma. Don't really have any uh, particular destination other than to try see Bethlehem, although you can kind of see it from uh, within this town as well. Sur Bahar is also on this road. And we're now facing eastward, looking into uh, East Jerusalem and past the separation barrier. And up here on the right is Harkoma, the town, the edge of Jerusalem. So it looks like that's about as far as I can go on this walk. Unfortunately, that's you can see where the actual pedestrian lane is going to come to an end on both sides. So um, looks like there is a little track path, but I probably will leave this adventure for another day. Thank you for watching.